Yesterday, I was browsing Reddit, as a person with my profession would do, and I stumbled upon this post in the Mac Apps subreddit. In it, there was a link to Gumroad. A guy was charging 4 bucks for an application that was pretty simple but nice and catchy. Once opened, this app would make snow appear on your screen and it would stack on top of your dock, where a penguin would slide as well. Nice. So once I saw this, as the senior software engineer that I am, I wanted to code something similar right away. Let's get started then. Mm, I don't actually know how to code Mac apps, I only write c -sharp code mainly for Windows. Right, well, I won't let that stop me. My idea comes with a bit of a tweak, and that is to modify a Mac's mouse cursor to leave behind these snowflakes. But I also want it more customizable, so if the end user wishes it can leave something else behind. As any sane person with no Swift knowledge would do, I will turn to ChatGPT. How to create a mouse cursor effect from code on Mac. Using JavaScript on web, uh, I don't want it only in the browser, I want it on all the apps, more like embedded in the OS. Okay, now we're talking, I see it generated a script, God knows if this will work. I see we can also use Python, oh, it would use a library called PyObjective-C, I guess, to interact with macOS's API behind the scenes anyway, so it would do the same thing. Let's stick to plain Swift for this then. Well, I guess I'll open up Xcode and create a macOS app name it custom cursor. The interface is going to be Swift UI and the language Swift. Awesome. Here we have it. I see this created a content view as well, but since our actual app wouldn't show anything, we can replace this V stack right here with an empty view. Now in the custom cursor app, we are going to call a function on the appearance of the content view. So basically of our application screen and we'll call this start effect. Next, let's create a class that is going to make the cursor effect using this start effect method. So new file, Swift file, and uh, name it custom cursor manager. We are going to make it a singleton since we need a shared instance for the entire application. I see our AI friend also declared two more variables. One is going to be the window of the app, the type of it will be NS window, and the second will be the layer on top of our actual desktop that we will have the effect on. And since we want it to constantly emit our specific PNG file, the type of it will be CA emitter layer. The constructor for this class, meaning the code that will execute upon the creation of a new instance, will be empty and will move on to writing the method that will start this cursor effect. Remember, the one that we are calling from the main app on the appearance of our screen. In here, firstly, we will need to describe the actual window in which our app will need to function. So it is going to be a transparent window that will take up our entire screen. Firstly, let's declare our NS window. For it, we will need a content rect, which describes the origin and size of our window. We can just pass it here, our main screen frame. For the style, we'll choose borderless, since we are going with the invisible look. For buffer, we will choose buffered. This means this window renders all drawings into a display buffer and then flushes it into the screen. And finally, we won't defer the creation of our window until it is moved on screen. We want it made from the get-go. With our window now available, let's start to describe it in more detail. We don't want it to be opaque, nor to have a background color. The effect should appear in front of whatever we are doing. So its layer level is going to be in front. Let's choose screensaver for that. It should ignore mouse events, also, to make sure our app window, so the mouse effect, is in front and always shown, we will use make key and order front. By the way, I am taking all of these from the Apple documentation website and there are all these descriptions of what all of these functions do in Swift. We are now at the point in which we need to describe our effect, like we just described our window. So after that, we can add them to our window and make them appear. So let's create a new method, setup effect, and as a parameter, we will add the view in which we want them to appear. So we can now call it with our window content view. These exclamation marks are to ensure the compiler these objects actually exist and they are not null. Getting back to the description, I said that I want this effect to be created by multiple PNG images being constantly spawned behind my cursor. 
for that I'm going to use the concepts of CA emitter layer and CA emitter cell. Basically, the emitter layer emits particles that are going to be our images, and one individual image is going to be a cell. Let's say that one cell is going to be 10 by 10 pixels in dimension and is going to have a circular shape. Now for the actual cells, they will be made up out of a specific PNG image with a transparent background that we will provide. Birth rate will say how often a new image appears, lifetime is how long it is going to last, we will put 2.0, and before the image disappears we want it to drop a bit, so let's give a Y acceleration of 30 with a velocity range of 20. We want these cells to be emitted by our layer from the origin point. All that's left to do now is to add our layer containing all the cells to the view of our window that we receive as a parameter, but this function only makes one snowflake. You can see it in this array. So let's store it in the custom effect layer variable. So we spawn it at an interval, where our mouse is at that specific point. For this spawning, we will generate our last function, call it update effect, and it will take a position as parameter. Here we will just emit a new image at the parameter position. And now upon the final lines of our start cursor effect function, we will call this method with our mouse coordinate as a parameter. I will now add my PNG image file to the assets directory, so import, and let's try to run the program in order to see how it did. Build succeeded, that looks promising, open anyway. Okay, first of all, I cannot believe this is actually working, and second, I think we need to tweak a few things in order to optimize some aspects. So the birth rate is quite high, and also the scale is a bit big. I'd like the images to be smaller. That's much better. There are obviously a lot of improvements that can be made to this. One that I'm thinking about is stopping the effect once the mouse gets in a standstill position in order to not become too distracting. I will push this project to a GitHub repository that I will link down below. But yeah, this was one of those rare cases where the actual implementation of an idea is more straightforward than you initially think. Thank you for watching to the end and until next time, happy coding!